All right, very well. In this screencast, we're going to deal with the average value of a function. This is actually a very short screencast, shouldn't be more than, than five minutes from start to finish. Of course, you already know how long it's going to be because, well, you just know. Um, I would like to consider the average value of a function. So if I have some, some function, like so, on some closed interval from A to B, here's A and here's B, F of A, F of B, if I want to know, okay, I take all these values of the function and I add them all up and I divide by infinity, what the heck does that even mean? I'm not even sure. But here's what we do. We define the average value of a function as the integral from A to B of f of x dx divided by b minus a. Now, you may wonder, why does that work? Well, what is this? This is an area. Specifically, it is this area, the signed area between the function f and the x-axis. Well, what if we decided, instead of making it look like this, what if we kind of rectangularized it? What if we made a rectangle with the same area as the function? Let's pretend that this area has the, this rectangle has the same area as the purple thing from before. Well, in that case, this is b minus a, and this is the average value of the function. So how do I get the average value of the function? I take the area under the curve on the interval and divide by the width of the interval. And that is the average value of a function. So if we were to want the average value of a particular function on an interval from A to B, we take the integral and divide by the length of the interval. Now the curious thing on this says that the mean value theorem for integrals says that this is sum f of c. You are going to find a place. You are going to find a place in between a and b for which f at that point is the average value of the function. That's the intermediate value theorem applied to the max-min theorem. It's the mean value theorem for integrals. So once we find out how to compute these things, and we will, we will very soon know how to compute these things, once we find out how to compute these things, we just divide by the length of the interval, average value of a function on a closed interval. OK? That's a neat little thing to want to have around. So, by example, uh, we'll probably go longer than five minutes, rats. Uh, let's find the average value of g of x, which is the square root of 9 minus x squared, on the interval from negative 3 to 3. And you're saying to yourself, wait a second, I know what that looks like. That is a semicircle. I want the average value of that function. Well, how do I get the average value of that function? The average value of g is 1 over 3 minus negative 3 times the integral from negative 3 to 3 of my function dx. Well, now, what is the integral of my function dx? It's the area of that semicircle. Oh, wait, I know how to find the area of a semicircle. The whole circle would be pi times 3 squared, but we only need half of it. And so that turns out to be 3 pi over 4, which happens to be like 2 and a quarter, which happens to be about this high. And it seems reasonable that the red rectangle has the same area as the purple semicircle, and so our results are confirmed. Ha! I did do it in less than five minutes. You didn't think I could. Ha ha. See you soon.